my guest by our processional hymn. This is Trinity Sunday. Thank you. How glorious that entrance was. Our service this morning begins on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer as we do right one today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy upon, upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to work the unity to worship the unity keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory O father with the son and the holy spirit live and reign one god forever and ever Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings for today. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the water. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. <clears throat> and God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the <coughs> sky. So God created the great sea, monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the water swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, <coughs> the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, 
and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Let us read together Psalm 8. It can be found in your leaflet inside your service bulletin. O oh Lord our governor, my soul is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is raised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to dwell in the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the words of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man? According to Matthew. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These words are often spoken before the beginning of the homily as a part of the Eucharist service. We begin the Holy Eucharist rite with, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as the people respond, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. In our public and private worship, we make the great sign of the cross, which is a symbolic act of recognizing or calling upon the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we are initiated into the heritage and into the inheritance of the community of God through baptism, by the use of water, and these spoken holy words I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are blessings given, often accompanied by the sign of the cross for goodwill, for sacred use, blessings of prayer shawls and crosses, used as a source of protection, health, and healing. With the use of holy oil, the priest says, I anoint you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. With the use of holy water, the priest says, I bless you or I bless this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. With the use in a benediction blessing, I say, and you hear me say this, May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. At the time of death, we hear these solemn final words of the last rite that I've said too many times now. Depart, O Christian soul, out of this world. In the name of God the Father Almighty who created you, in the name of Jesus Christ who redeemed you, in the name of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies you, may your rest be this day in peace and your dwelling place in the paradise of God. We are a church of the creed. As a creedal church, we define and publicly profess our belief in a holy trinity as we say together the Nicene Creed in nearly every service, the Nicene Creed in effect is a table of contents to the most important central teachings found in the Bible and in our faith. Today is Trinity Sunday. Today we celebrate the Holy Trinity, the revealed self of God in three persons, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. From Advent to Pentecost, we have focused all of our attention on the birth and the life and the death, resurrection and ascension of Jesus. We have lived the liturgical drama of the life of Christ Sunday by Sunday, thanks to our church, including the climax in Holy Week of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and Resurrection Easter Sunday. Last week, we celebrated the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the Christian Church with a birthday party, too, Pentecost. But now, folks, comes the hard part, living a faithful Christian life in our ordinary life in what the church calls our ordinary time, which is the time during Pentecost. It's the largest liturgical time that we have in our calendar, the longest. But what better way to go forward in our journey but for the church to celebrate and to recognize how the church understands God 
and how it is lived out, how it is lived out in our lives. Today we begin with a sort of back to the basics of a primary doctrine of our faith. Although the word itself, Trinity, does not actually appear in Holy Scriptures. Did you know that? You will not find the word Trinity in our Bible. But the great church, the Church Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, proclaimed the concept of God in three persons as an early church doctrine of our faith. Of course, strong inferences from scriptures seem to be almost self-evident for recognizing a triune God. Paul's wonderful closing benediction in his second letter to the uh, Christians in Corinth, which we heard, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. The Holy Trinity right there. And then in Jesus' great commission found in Matthew's gospel that we also heard this morning, Go therefore and make disciples of Christ of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It was important to the church fathers the fact that God refers to God's self in Genesis that we heard this morning as we or us. Let us create humanity. Well, these were just some of the building blocks from which the historic document, the Nicene Creed, was carefully crafted at the Council of Ni Nicaea. In seminary, of course, the study of Trinitarian theology was very complex and very comprehensive as we studied volumes of interpretations and commentaries throughout history. But what does the Trinity mean for us simply? It boils down to this. <coughs> God is love. God is love. That's it. That's the essence. This is the essence of the Trinity. God is love. The full expression of God's love is revealed through the three persons of God. God the loving Father, Jesus our brother and our Savior, and the radiance of God and the Son through the Holy Spirit. I never tire of hearing that word radiance. I just, I love that word, radiance. It reminds me of my favorite metaphor of the Trinity. God is the sun, the source of all energy. Jesus is the light from that sun that enlightens us, that enlightens the world, and lights our way. The Holy Spirit, and here's this word I like, is the radiant heat that warms our hearts, that brings us to maturity, like the ripening of fruit and the greening of herbs. The Holy Spirit provides the warmth, like the warmth from a bird that sits on her brood with dove-like patience until there is a quickening into life. God is as God does. What God does is love. Love in relationships. Relationships of love are what God is all about. First and foremost, God is in a relationship of love between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There's always been a relationship of love. Relationships have always been important to the divine. In his great historical love affair with us, and it has been, 
You can summarize the Old Testament as complicated and sometimes as strange as it may be, but the Old Testament is still a love story to us. A historical love affair with God trying to be in relationship with us and him with them. God has decided that the best way he could build a relationship with us, finally, was to reveal the fullness of his love through the relationship of the three persons, the Holy Trinity. This is God's story. Love and God loving us. God's story is our story. The Trinity is an important story because if we are created in God's image, listen up, we are created in the image of the Trinity. You thought about that? If we are created in the image of God, we are also created in the image of the Trinity. We are grafted into a divine story that gives our lives meaning and purpose beyond ourselves. The more we allow ourselves to be shaped and formed by the love of God, the person of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the closer we get to our true spiritual selves, our true selves, our most authentic self, then we become who we really are and what God wants us to be, instruments of God's grace and love in this world. Instruments of God's grace and love in this world. So on this day, let us celebrate, oh, not just a doctrine, but the story of God's love, which is also our story. Let us also remember that people's hearts are not converted because we can articulate a particular doctrine but because we can share our faith in very human terms, in relationship terms, sharing the love of God in how he has acted in our own lives through the Father and through the Son and through the Holy Spirit. Oh, may it be so with us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us now turn to the Holy Creed of the Nicene Creed, found on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer. As we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the 
Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, and became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found in your service bulletin. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of the holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry, our priest, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of the government in this and every land especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Elena, Jane, the Marr family, Carolyn, Joey, Larry, Sue, the Her family, John, Chris and Charlotte, Patty, Tina, Monica, the Weatherly family, and Holly and all those in, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for thy service departed in this thy faith and fear, especially Jeff Riddick, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Mother Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Philip, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity in the Fields, Mason. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the village mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for peace of Jerusalem. We pray for peace among all nations. 
We pray for peace for our own nation. We pray for the protection and comfort of those who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Trevor Holly, Rachel Miller, and Jacob Stevens. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by the Mullins family in honor of Catherine and Chase Phillips' wedding. Mm -hmm. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating a birthday, especially Shirley Bilger and Vicki Rogers. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week, especially Diedrich and Barbara Van Dyke. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray for the country of Ukraine. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the many blessings that you've given us in this life. We give thanks for the blessing of St. Philip Episcopal Church. Amen. Amen. Continue to inspire us, O oh Lord, to do thy work. These our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Let us now humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Our confession can be found on page 331 in the Book of Common Prayer. Confess together. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge in the way of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, in thought, in word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent. And are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is serious unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen in you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Peace. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace.
morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. it. Oh, we do rejoice. Today I'm rejoicing especially as we prepare for our parish meeting. I rejoice for this faith community here at St. Philip. You're such dear ones. A couple of announcements that we do have. Of course, uh, we will have our parish meeting. You all know that or you wouldn't be here at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, please join us after the service. We've, uh, for some time now, we've shortened the length of that service. It's usually not any longer than 45 minutes. Uh, but uh, please come and uh, support that uh, sort of necessary protocol within our church, which ends up being really a celebration of uh, St. Philip. Our healing service continues at 1210 on Wednesdays. Come and join us for that service. And our ongoing ministries, which we'll hear more about, uh, later, but our Thistle and Dee uh, ministry, our prescription bottle ministry, our food bank ministry, our manor house ministry, and a lot more during the parish meeting about Camp Abel, which was just a wonderful, glowing success thanks to you and your generosity and your discipleship, really. We will be presenting uh, a check to the Camp Abel staff on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is when we supply their lunch and the priest comes and says a few words and, and a prayer. Uh, and it will be at that time that we will present their uh, check in grand fare. It's one of those big, huge checks, <laughs> poster board checks. Our new daily breads are out. The June, July, and August edition is out. Please pick up your copies at the back of the church and in the foyer. Uh, our new Anglican Digest, uh, the summer edition, is also out. A reminder that this is Discretionary Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. Please continue to give generously for that. Uh, that is an ongoing ministry where literally we are able to contribute to charities and needs uh, locally nationally and even throughout the world as we carefully uh, discern uh, where that money is best uh, needed uh, so uh, please continue that is a, an actually an active ministry of of you of saint philip Just a quick backtrack for our parish meeting. Uh, after this service, we'll have a very quick just bathroom break. We're not having refreshments or, or coffee hour until after the parish meeting. So uh, please, if you need to stretch your legs a little bit or uh, use the restroom, you can do that. Uh, but please come back as soon as possible so we can get started. And then there will be refreshments after the parish meeting. Are there any other announcements that we might have? Yes. This Thursday is the second Thursday of the month, first Thursday is the first. So as the second Thursday, the men's club will be meeting and uh, we need uh, as many men to come on board and uh, show up so we can uh, do the final planning for the summer breakfast. To look forward to this Paul Bainey breakfast, and uh, we will have a meal, a barbecue, and all the, the fixings that go with it. Uh, and we encourage all men to please come. Uh, the, the money we give for the food is uh, usually donated back to the uh, men's club. Uh, the last time, uh, Father Terry had no petty cash, and so the money that we threw in the pot for the meal that went to the discretionary fund. Good. And so we uh, pride ourselves, and that's a bad thing maybe, but <laughs> we, we do delight in helping the church. And this is the reason for the men's club, the, the ECW, 
idea and many other fellowship groups that we have in this wonderful, wonderful parish. Please come. Thank you. Thank you, Dwight. Yes, Gary. Yes, regarding the uh, big breakfast that will start on Sunday morning, June the 11th. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Cost is six dollars per meal, and if you like, there's going to be seven breakfasts. But if you like, you can write a check in advance uh, and put just a little memo on the bottom left hand side uh, for the breakfast. You can pay cash or a donation uh, at the breakfast, or if it's easier for you, uh, six times seven would be forty two dollars per person. Uh, breakfast uh, along with being a lot of fun and a big fat belly <laughs> is that it really is an in-reach ministry uh, to our own parish as many times the eight o'clock and the 10 30s don't always have a chance to mix and so that's our time to be together I really strongly encourage the eight o'clock and especially the 10 30s because that that means you need to come a little bit earlier sometimes <laughs> it's easier for the eight o'clock just to stay I get that but uh, please, please come early to be a part uh, of this ministry to you, an outreach, an, an in-reach, I should say, uh, to us as a parish family. Thank you, Gary. A any other announcements? Yes, Father. For uh, those who uh, have put their name forward for one of the medallions that I'll be bringing back in July, uh, there's pictures of them up on the bulletin board, and uh, after talking with the secretary and she talked with Bonnie, you know, it was decided that we'll present those medallions after the 10:30 service on the 30th of July. Okay. So we just wanted to let that know so everybody knows when to come. Thank you. And if you'll uh, continue to look at the newsletter, we, we have uh, an article and an explanation about that. We will include the, the upcoming date if it's not already on there. Okay. We'll change the, well, change, we'll add the date of July 30th so that people realize that that would be the time to pick up their medallion so that they will be presented. Thank you. And thank you for that ministry. Do we have any birthday celebrations today? Birthdays? We've got a birthday girl. <laughs> and our fearless senior warden. <laughs> oh, let's pray. Oh God, our times are always in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may continue to grow in your wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you with this holy day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Happy birthday. Glad you're with us. Glad to be here. Appreciate your leadership. Any others? How about anniversaries? Here we go. <laughs> Here we go, another year. <laughs> Putting up with each other. <laughs> she said putting up with you. <laughs> oh, let's pray. Gracious God, Father of all, we give thanks for another year of these lives shared in human love and in your love that never fails. Bless this couple and all that is yet to come, confirming and strengthening them in the vows which they have made to one another in your name. Keep them faithful until they must part in death, 
and bring them together at last into eternal life. Amen. I bless you with this holy oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bless you with this holy oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. It seems like yesterday I was at your wedding. <laughs> that was 26 years ago, dear. Oh, that's a long time. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> The Van Dykes have been dear friends, especially Dedrick, for many, many years. Uh, and is, an, of course, serving our church on our vestry, and fin finishing his three years, and his lovely wife, Barbara. We're, we're, we're so glad that you're here and that you're celebrating your anniversary together with us. Thank you. Any others? Let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus that it is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive.
be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, everlasting God. For with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, thou art one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of thee, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. of his most blessed body, 
and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may attain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are worthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia! O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy to so much together of the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose poverty is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and be in us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him by thanks with a thankful heart. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of 
Christ. Christ. 
those that could not be here today and for all of those that we have prayed for, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep them to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Become what you have received. Let us pray. Almighty and heavenly God, we most heartily thank thee for thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us that we are very members and corporate the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to him with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this day, for your upcoming week, during our now great Pentecost season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.
love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.